Greetings fellow guitar enthusiasts. In this video today I'm going to share with you my top five guitar hacks that every player should know. From an easier way of playing and switching chords to how to make your strumming easier, the tips I'm going to show you in this video are sure to take your guitar playing to the next level. Now hack number one is pretty awesome but wait till you get to number five because it's a game changer and there's a few other bonus hacks as well. So whether you're a beginner looking to improve your playing or a seasoned guitarist wanting to expand your arsenal, these hacks are guaranteed to give you a competitive edge. Join me now and start mastering the guitar like a pro. Hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Jeff Davis. I'm a 35 year veteran guitar instructor holding a degree in classical guitar and also teacher education, teaching over 60 students a week, owner and director of my music school, Plymouth School of Music here in Plymouth, Michigan. And I'd like to invite you to set aside some focus practice time with me today and get ready to take your guitar playing to the next level. So let's grab your guitar and let's get going. Hack number one, you're having a hard time getting the notes to sound on the guitar? Well, let's talk about how we can actually press a note. It seems basic, it seems simple, but most students, when they go to play a note on the guitar, when they press down in between the two metal parts, in the fret space there, they press down in the middle of the fret. Sure, that can sound a note, but do you know that it's easier to get a note to sound if you press close to the metal part? So you notice how this is buzzing out? I move it close to the metal part clears her right up. Hack number two, is chord switching difficult for you? You know, a lot of the chords that we're playing are the traditional typical chords, but a lot of the music we're listening to, they don't use traditional chords anymore. So for the typical G chord, the typical C chord, and the typical D chord, you might hear a G5, a C5, and a D5. So like, That was not Taylor Swift, I promise. All right, so let's talk about this for a second. So if we're gonna switch and swap this chord out, it's much easier to play because you really only have three fingers. But the most important thing is, is when we're switching from chord to chord, going from a, C, a G5 to a C5, only one of the actual fingers is changing. So it allows us to make it easier because we aren't moving as many fingers to the D5. All right, now as a bonus tip, if you do have to play and you are learning a song that has traditional chords, look for common fingerings that stay exactly the same from chord to chord. A lot of students like to lift, move, and switch all of their fingers out one at a time, and that waste, that's a lot of time you're wasting there. So let's talk about this chord progression that I have up on the screen here. I have a C chord to an E minor to an A minor. Now notice this, if I were to play this by resetting each finger, See how much time that takes? Way too much time. Ain't nobody got time for that. So let's figure out how we can make this work and make it simpler for yourself. If we're switching from a C to an E minor, notice the second finger, it doesn't have to move at all, right? And we're going from E minor to A minor, notice the second finger doesn't have to move at all. Of course, you do have to reset when you get back to the beginning of the chord progression though. Hack number four, want to sound more rhythmic in your playing? Want to sound more dynamic with how you're playing? A lot of times, a lot of players will use what are called percussive mutes when they play. So when you hear something like Or like, what's the song I'm thinking of? All right, for all you younger students, you may not recognize that. I think that was Bob Seger, is that Night Moves? So let's talk about this. You know, when you're playing, we all know the down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, that syncopated strum, which we're all really familiar with. What you do is you just take one part of that rhythm and you add a mute instead of strumming. And it really makes for a much more percussive sound. It actually mixes better when you're playing with a drummer as well, because that's typically where the drummer will hit the snare. So check this out. If I go down, up, mute, up, 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 down, up. That's definitely night moves. So now as a bonus tip, do you feel like you're always playing the guitar too loud or too quiet? Well, there are these two terms in music called sel ponticello. It's Italian for the word that means bridge. Then there's sel tasto, which means it's Italian for fingerboards. And it's an instruction for the instrument to be played closer to the fretboard. Sel ponticello is back here. And sel tasto is over here. So if I'm playing a chord progression like this, 
I want it to sound quieter, I'll go Sal Ponticello, closer to the bridge. I'm not strumming any lighter, I'm just strumming closer to the bridge. Now if I make it sound loud, I'll go Sal Pasto, which is closer to the sound hole and to the neck of the guitar. All right, final hack of the day, hack number five. Do you feel like you're fighting the strings when you're playing the guitar? Well, a lot of times beginning students will come in and I'm teaching them how to strum and what they think strumming is, is completely different than what it actually is. You know, often as musicians, often as people, whenever we're learning anything, we always overdo everything. So what students do when they strum is they'll go very robot-like, right? Strumming is not robot-like. So when we're strumming, Best way of thinking about it is we're hitting less strings on the way up than we are on the way down. I often tell students an up strum really is nothing more than just the strings getting in the way as you're preparing for a down strum. So if I were to give it a percentage, I would say I'm hitting probably 80% of the strings on the way down and 20% on the way up. So think about your strumming for this hack as being like this. See what I'm doing? It's very light. My up strum is not very forced and it's not not a robot. So. So in conclusion, hacks are a great way to make things easier and a better way to playing the guitar. As beginners, sometimes we need to be reminded how some tricks can make our playing much better and help us learn quicker. I hope you enjoyed the lesson for today. If you found it valuable in any way, if you enjoyed it, please leave a comment, like, and above all else, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more upcoming lessons. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson.